Hey everybody, what's going on? So what you're looking at here is an aronia shrub, uh, aronia melancarpa, I believe is the botanical term. Um, this is a Viking variety. It's probably one of the most common varieties of uh, aronia because uh, it's a really good fruit set uh, and I think the quality of the fruit is pretty good. This is a bumper crop this year. Um, last year we actually had no berries at all. It might have been like one or two shriveled ones. Um, but I think it was just gearing up for the right weather, um, which this year had. So we've got definitely several pounds of fruit. Um, I'm not exactly sure. I'll probably, uh, at the end of this video, we'll pick it all and weigh it out to see how much we're actually getting off this Viking. This uh, shrub is probably around five-ish years old. I got it when it was maybe like one year old and um, I planted it. Uh, maybe it was two. Um, that was probably like three and a half, four years ago. Um, so this is fairly mature. Um, I don't think it's going to get too, too much bigger. It's about like uh, six feet right now. Um, the other variety, Nero, it doesn't get quite as tall. But it actually has really nice flowers in the spring and really uh, dark, like fire red foliage in the fall. So it's a really cool plant. So what happened was a couple years ago, I saved the seeds and I refrigerated them and planted them out. So let's go take a look at what happened when I planted them. This row is a little weedy, but, um, and I need to come through and clear out stuff, but I actually planted a, another generation of uh, aronias. And I guess you can't call these the Vikings. You'd call them F1 of Viking because they'll be a little bit genetically different from the Viking variety. Um, and so I planted one here, got another one here, pretty close spacing. Um, this one, these haven't been growing very well, these last two. Uh, they're, it's more shady and there's more competition from the ground cover. I'm not exactly sure, um, but they're not doing as well as some of the other of the generation that I planted. And there's some actually some more um, in the back forest garden too. Um, and one of them actually is not a seedling, it's a cutting from uh, the previous one that I showed you, the large mother plant. Basically what you can do is just bend down um, one of the branches. Here, let's look over here. You can bend down the branch and uh, put soil on top and a rock. And over time, it's gonna root. Um, but the other thing that's really cool about Aronia um, is that it will actually uh, sucker. Um, and so you can see, I can't quite tell if this one's coming out of the base or not, but what will happen is it will naturally layer itself uh, when there's these side shoots you can see and they'll kind of like burrow underground and come up here, come up here, come up here. And what I've been doing is uh, cutting off um, those rooted, they're actually kind of like rooted cuttings because when you separate it from the plant, they actually already have roots on them. Um, and I'll go ahead and pot those up uh, because I can't really fit any more uh, ronia here. Um, but the other cool thing is remember like when you start plants from seeds, especially these like perennials, that each offspring is going to be a little bit different. So this could be a completely, even though it'd be F1 of Viking, it could have traits that are very different. Maybe it has bigger fruit or better tasting fruit um, because there's some issues with aronia. People call it chokeberry. Um, and so I'm going to go and cut open a fruit so you can kind of see, and I'll tell why they call it chokeberry. Okay, so we're back at the main Viking plant now. I'm just going to grab one of these guys. They're all kind of ripening. It's like mid, it's early August right now. I'm in zone 7B and uh, yeah, they're kind of ripening um, right at the end of summer here. You can eat them earlier. They're just gonna be more stringent. Um, and uh, I will take a bite of this so you can see what it looks like on the inside and I'll describe the flavor. So they call it chokeberry because it's very stringent, um, but I found the more you let it ripen on the vine, like if I, I could even let this go into September and it'll be less and less astringent. And I got this, um, I don't know if you can see in the camera. I'm gonna flip the lens around. So it's pretty juicy. It tastes actually like a green apple. Like a green apple that's not super sweet, but it does have some like fruitiness to it. It's got flavor, it's got acidity, it's got a little bit of sugar, um, and there's some seeds inside too, which you can eat. It's probably good for you to chop them up. Really high in antioxidants. Yeah, that's the other thing. Aronia is like a superfood. The that dark purple skin and the dark red flesh is full of antioxidants. So it's a really healthful food to juice and to freeze the juice, or you can just eat the berries like this. What you have here now is um, most of these are the Aronia little, not the seedlings, but the um, the pups, you guess you can call them, or the stolons that have popped up around the bases of the plants. 
Uh, this is mostly from the F1 generation. So um, I separated them from the mother plants. And now they're, they're happy in a pot. And what I found with Aronia compared to almost any other plant I'm working with, it's very, it's very vigorous, very hardy. It's, um, it doesn't have too much transplant sh shock. It kind of just keeps going. As long as it doesn't dry out too, too bad. I haven't had many of these die on me. I think maybe one. This one's not looking too great, but most of them do really good. And I've actually given away several of the mo most um, successful of these cuttings. Um, and so I'm going to continue to do, and I can even, <clears throat> excuse me, I can even probably start layering these cuttings. Like this one has a little stolen coming out um, and an off offshoot. So I could probably start to layer that and then I could start multiplying and multiplying. The thing is I don't really have, I can't really sell these as the, um, Ronia variety because or excuse me the um, Viking variety because that's a it might be patented uh, but it's also just not guaranteed to be the same um, I think actually one or two of these comes from the mother plant most of these are all seedlings so um, if I give them to someone I can't guarantee that they're gonna be exactly the same as a Ronia but that's kind of for exactly the same as the Viking but that's kind of cool because you're gonna get your own variety um, when you're dealing with seedlings so uh, that's all I got for you. I think this is a great plant to grow. Um, it's not as bad tasting as they make it out to be. It's actually quite nice when you let it ripen properly. Uh, easy to grow, it's a native plant. You can see not so much on these leaves, but on the mother plants, the leaves are getting eaten up. Um, it doesn't really affect the fruit set, but it just, um, it means that there's food for wildlife. There's caterpillars that are eating the leaves. Um, and so you're feeding the ecology and yourself by planting uh, aronia. So it's. It's a wonderful plant to grow. So that's actually two pounds right there and I've got some left over. So we're looking at closer to two and a half pounds, which is great. It's the most I've ever gotten. Um, of course you get more and more every year. And this is year uh, four of growing the Viking Aronia. So got some beautiful berries. Um, for those of you who haven't tasted, I forget if I've, if uh, when I made the earlier part of this video, if I talked about the taste, but uh, when you wait until they're fully ripe, um, they taste like apples, to be honest. They taste like, um, they're pretty tart, and they have a sweetness, and they have a stringency. Um, so it's very, very similar to uh, a, a tart apple. Um, but yeah, if you wait till they're, they're ripe, they're actually pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and decide fig and figure out what I want to do with these. If I want to juice them and freeze the juice, maybe. But that would make me throw out quite a bit of the pulp. I think what I might do instead is dry some of them for like raisins, basically, in the way that you do like dried currants or something. Um, I'll probably freeze a decent amount of them for smoothies so I can just throw them right in. Um, and get both the inside parts and the skin and then I'll probably also juice them and freeze the juice in the ice cubes or something just to save space um, that way I'm not really throwing out uh, a large portion of them and of course I will save a certain amount um, and there's pl actually plenty of things you could do I'll save a certain amount for um, uh, cold stratifying in the refrigerator uh, there's probably like five or six seeds in there and you can actually uh, put them in a plastic bag with a little bit of water just to keep them damp. Uh, you don't want to drown them. Um, but you keep them in the fridge for a couple months and you can take them out and um, actually grow new plants out of them. They need that kind of cold um, stratification process. And I'll also keep a couple of them just kind of on hand to eat fresh. And then also the last use of them is uh, whenever I go on hikes or on trips, um, I love just spreading seeds and kind of spreading this uh, high quality fruit that's native to the area that feeds uh, wild animals and is great for the ecosystems. I just chuck them out the window or alongside the, the path that, well, that I'm hiking on uh, and that way I'm kind of like spreading them around um, and places that, you know, I'm going otherwise. So why not spread some Aronia seeds? Um, so that's it. That's my video on Aronia. Uh, comment below if you have any questions and don't forget to subscribe if you like this video and you want to see more about cool fruit and nuts and mushrooms and vegetables, that kind of thing. All right. Thanks for watching.